Let's do a couple other geeky things and uh, call it a week, shall we? So let's, um, listener Joe, while the weather, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, is still warm, there's people, people still doing some projects outside. Joe says, you've talked about this numerous times in the past, but now I'm building a t- detached garage and I'm looking to run Cat 6 out to it. After multiple lightning damage issues, you, Dave, finally found a solution which works. What was that exactly? So the best solution, and it has been recommended to me many times, I have not implemented it. So this is a do as I say, or do as others say, not do as I do, would be to run fiber. Because that is not going to be susceptible to lightning strikes, right? It doesn't transmit. There's no copper. So lightning, it doesn't transmit across the insulated fiber line or It's because it's just fiber. So you need to get some uh, converters, you know, to convert uh, the fiber to Ethernet and back, right? That, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, and then of course you'd need to run the actual fiber cable. Uh, but, but that's, that's it. And I will say, you know, we've got fiber in the neighborhood now. That's how, that's how John and I are talking. That's how I will upload the show. Right. Uh, and, uh, and I was asking them about, you know, what, how does, how well does this work? And the guy was like, yeah, man, you're going to be fine. Like lightning cannot touch this. And it's a super thin cable. Your biggest, your biggest issue is putting a kink in the cable. But obviously if you lay it properly and, and set it up Mm -hmm. the right way, then that won't, then that won't be an issue. Um, If you don't want to do the fiber thing or, or do you want to know what I did, which is sort of the same. When I moved in here, there were two coax and two cat five E Cables, direct burial cables run between my house and my office slash garage. And that's still what's there, uh, despite a uh, stump grinder trying to kill my cables Mm -hmm. at one point. Uh, Amazingly, these four cables are run all together. I mean, they're not to call them a bundle would be a a little overstating, but they're all buried in the same place. Like there was one little trench dug and we just they laid the cables in them. Stump grinder caught one cable. That's it. And and snap this one Ethernet cable and the other Ethernet cable and the two coax survived. So I was able to jump to the other Ethernet cable and then since then have patched the original one. So everything's all good. But um, you will you need, could you could spray paint CBYD. Uh, they're supposed to do that anyway. <laughs> and also, it's a good idea if the homeowner tells you there are cables there. Don't dig there. <laughs> Maybe the homeowner might not be entirely the idiot that you think they are, um, but you know, there you go. Yeah, I was on a, uh, I was on a Skype call or you know some sort of VoIP video call or whatever, and the guys out there, rah, 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 you know, grinding the stumps up, and uh, all of a sudden, I did not have the call anymore. And this was when we had the internet coming into the house and across the way. Right now, it comes into the office and goes the other direction. But um, as soon as that happened, I was, I knew what happened because I saw where he was and I went out like waving my arms like, stop, dude. So anyway, yeah. what I CBYD, of course, standing for call for you dig. I didn't know what that stood for until oh. very recently when they uh, tore up my ha- neighborhood to upgrade the uh, natural gas lines. Interesting. Yeah. Like, what and does it, that mean? What does it and mean? Then they use, and they, then they use different colors for the different uh, type of lines. So I think blue is water. Oh, uh, I forget. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. So I need to that, find out where my well cap is. I wonder if the CBYD people would tell me. <laughs> oh, seriously. All right. Anyway, yeah, it's weird. My well cap is buried. I, I just don't know why or how or how that passed building code. Do you have it, a metal detect? I do. And I was thinking about just using that too. Yeah, that would be the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. But if you, to get back to the, the question at hand, if you do have or decide to run Ethernet cable and you need to worry about lightning stuff, you will need Ethernet surge protectors. Uh, some of them, you, you, like if you buy UPSs, some UPSs have Ethernet surge protectors built into them. You'll want to make certain that the surge protectors that you buy will allow 1,000 megabit, gigabit Ethernet or faster to pass through them. Because some of them in uh, certainly older UPSs would only allow 100 megabit to pass through them. So you just want to eyes wide open when you're making your purchases and all that stuff. I have been using the APC ProtectNet devices over the years. And I will put a link in the show notes to those. 
Uh, those have worked very well for me and uh, and and have saved me many times. Uh, the I have had one of them blow up over the years, but but it saved everything past it. Uh, so that's you know that's that's its job. So yeah, there you go. Um, any thoughts on that, John? Before we uh, before we ask answer ask we will ask and answer. I believe the final question here, which is sort of related. So. Okay, uh, listener Brent writes and says, do you have a recommendation for a surge protector to get for my cable modem? He says, I currently have Xfinity gigabit internet and my Aris SB8200 modem seems to have had its ethernet ports damaged from last night's storm. I'm planning on buying a new modem today. Hopefully that fixes it, but I would like to make sure this doesn't happen again. So, of course, the protect net uh, adapters are to are are great to have to protect the Ethernet side of things. However, I don't think that would have protected you here. It's hard to say whether the lightning strike came from within your network and therefore blew up the Ethernet port on the router from that direction, or if it came in from the coax side and blew it up from that direction. I have had both happen to me, and so in addition to the ProtectNet. Uh, adapters or uh, devices that we just talked about, you need a coax surge protector. And I will put a link. I generally, I just go to Amazon and buy, you know, whatever the, the best one is. I, I, I found one just now. So I will put that in the, the show notes so you can have an example of what that is. Just make sure that whatever you get goes above 1500 megahertz. The ones I found go to 2500. So you're fine. You just don't want to filter out the frequencies that are used by your cable modems channels. So uh, usually really it's above a thousand, I think, is the, the key. But, you know, these things will go much higher. Um, so there you go. That that should should help you out. I hope I hope I hope 